Today we're going to do a very quick and simple watercolour of some Christmas baubles and this is something that you could expand on and make into a Christmas card if you wanted to so you could use your image on somewhere like Canva and add some lettering over the top and turn it into a card. So if you're interested in that I will do a quick um, section at the end of this video showing you how you would do that on Canva but for now we'll just talk about the actual painting. So I started off by doing three evenly spaced balls where I just drew round a container that I had to create these circles and then I put a ribbon on and a little fastener on the top so very little detail you don't need lots of detail for this let's keep it crisp and simple with a nice white paper behind and just do these three baubles so the watercolors that I'm going to use today are the Viviva color sheets and I've chosen these today because this is the metallic set that they sent me so all metallic colors that I haven't used before so if this does go horribly wrong I apologize so I'm using these for the first time and we'll see how it goes so let's have a look first of all at the colors that we've got so I'll pop that to one side um, in here what's this that we've got just a little paintable postcard oh I see so they've sent in here can't actually get it out So in here we've actually got two postcards, they've sent two, uh, that's just an example one with some information on the back and this one um, is one that you could actually use because it's blank on the back. And this here, oh it's a mini colour sheet, so we've got a tiny little, so this is a, like a little free gift that's come in here with your metallic colours we've also got this little mini colour sheet. So here we have a brown, a midnight blue, foliage green, chrome yellow, vermilion and crimson. So they're going to be really handy. And then they've got this little divider in there to keep those colours nice. So that's a tiny little set there. We'll pop those back in that envelope and put them to one side. So that's very nice to get an added bonus, a little extra. I didn't know that was in there. Okay, so these are the ones that I actually wanted to talk about today and these are the metallic ones so again you've got this where you can pop your name and we've got a red a pink let's have a look fire that looks like it could be rather nice lava jade emerald aurora so northern lights sapphire so you could actually perhaps use these for doing a picture of the Northern Lights, that would be rather nice. Two silvers there, that one looks like it's slightly brighter. Or maybe it's just so that you have the quantity, you may be going to use these more than the others. Two golds. And then a blank page for you to mix your colours on at the back there, or to practice with. Or oh, there's your mixing palette. So those are blank pages to practice and then you've got your mixing palette. So we've got some lovely colours here. So we'll do three different coloured baubles. So I think we'll set off with using these two together. Um, so we'll just mix a little bit in here to begin with of each of these two colours and pop them on this bauble. Once you've got your colours from your colour sheets and pop them in your palette, I mean you could use this if you wanted to, just pop it to one side and leave it open so that they can dry. You don't want to be closing that. Although you, we have got this divider there which is handy. So if you're out and about, you can just shut them up and it would just be on here. It's nice if you're in the studio and you've got the time just to pop that on one side and leave, let them dry like that and it'll keep them nicer. Okay, so to begin with what I'm going to do with a clean brush and some nice clean water is I'm just going to wet this first bauble. This is a mixed media pad, you could also use watercolour paper of course, I quite like this one, it's nice bright white paper, keep it nice and crisp for this Christmassy look of these baubles. So by adding the water, I'm going to let that white paper shine through and not make them too opaque. So I'm going to set off with the lighter colour which is the pink and you can see the iridescence in that, you can see how pretty it is and I'm going to put that all over so we're working quickly because we're working wet onto wet rather than wet onto dry and that's a lovely colour I'm hoping that the camera is going to pick up some of this shimmer 
it's kind of a baby pink with a, a shimmer in it so there's all sorts of things you could use this this would be a good one to use with children doing things like I don't know ballerinas and all that kind of thing where you want some nice glitter, glittery pink be a nice one to for children to use so I'm now going to add some red into that just down one side where we're going to have it a bit darker so let's imagine the lights coming from the other side and this side's going to be darker and we're going to put the red all the way around it's quite a warm red it's quite an orangey red whereas the pinks a little bit of a cooler color then I'm just going to clean my brush and I'm going to remove any excess water from the brush so it's just a damp brush now I'm just going to tease those colors around into each other to get something like a shadow going from that side as if we've got the light hitting this side and if we wanted to make some extra light whilst that brush is nice and dry we could just take a little bit out to give us a, a bit of a shimmer on the top there and if we wanted to go slightly darker down the side we could just take some neat red and go down here just to increase the contrast between the darkest and lightest areas and we'll leave that to dry and see how that one dries whilst we go on to the next one so let's have a think about which colours we're going to use for the next one okay so I've decided to go for fire and lava so I've got my fire there and my lava there the la lava is slightly redder whereas the fire is more on the orangey yellow side so they look completely different to the do on here so with all these Viviva sheets I think the important thing is that you do some example sheets and keep some um, swatches of the colours so that you know what they're going to look like once they're on your paper so they look quite different but what a beautiful colour that one is that fire um, absolutely gorgeous so let's see what it looks like so again we'll do exactly the same technique we'll wet it we'll put the darker color down well the, mm, not sure which is the darker but we'll put the more red color down this side and we'll keep it lighter at this side Now you can see with this second one I've used a lot more water unintentionally but actually it's not a bad thing because we can now see how this is going to dry is it going to cauliflower it may do it's pooling a little bit down here so it'll be interesting to see how these Viviva watercolors dry um, and if we don't get that cauliflower in, that's great because um, it means that they're very good for working wet in wet and we haven't got anything like that on this first one you can see that's nearly dry now and you can see the iridescence I'm really hoping the camera picks that up but you can see that shimmer across the whole thing apart from there where I lifted a little bit of light out so again I've lifted the light out on the same corner because we're imagining the lights coming from that side and this side is a little bit more in the shadow don't make them too dark um, we should have a lot of light around at Christmas we should have things twinkling so we don't want them to be dull we want them to be nice and bright so keep that white crisp paper coming through them um, and don't have them too dark at this side okay so let's think about the colors for the last one I should have done more baubles because now I'm having to choose which ones I want to do so what I'm going to do is I'm going to keep the silver and gold for doing the little um, fixings on the top and we'll have a look we can either go with the jade and emerald or the aurora and sapphire and just because of its name and how interesting it looks on there I think we're going to go with the aurora and the sapphire you might notice I've inadvertently flicked a bit of the blue into there so I'm hoping that dries okay in fact what I'm going to do is just pop a bit more of the red onto there to try and disperse a little bit of that blue but never mind so that's the aurora and that is a sapphire so you can see they're completely different to what they look on here so the aurora looks much bluer the sapphire isn't as deep as it looks on here um, but yeah we'll give these a go so I mean I would have I kind of associate aurora with green because we've had um, the northern lights visible from here on and off over the last few months um, I sometimes pop up to the top of the hill after tea in the evening um, and I can 
quite often see that green tinge of the lights so that's what I was kind of thinking it would be but it obviously looks much bluer so again I've probably got a bit more water on here than I did on the first bauble try not to flood flood it you can always lift a little bit of that off and make it just damp rather than really wet and of course how wet your paper ends up really depends on how much water your brush holds, how much water the paper absorbs and obviously how much water you take out of your pot of water. So all this is trial and error, um, getting to know your own papers and brushes and how much water to apply. So have a bit of a practice with that. So you can see that's really blue. It's not green as I thought it was going to be. So if we look at that, look at the difference in that colour um, from on the card to what it is here. So really important that you get to know these colours. They're beautiful, um, really bright and vibrant, but they're not as they appear, which quite often that works with a lot of paints, but different uh, brands. So I would call that turquoise really. And it doesn't look to me to be as metallic as the previous colours. I can see as the drying, we'll see what it looks like when it's dried, but as the drying you see the iridescence more so I can see the iridescence coming here where it's drying so maybe this one will look more iridescent once it's dry so there we are, we've covered the whole thing in that blue colour and then we've got slightly deeper blue with this one that's called sapphire so again we'll pop it to the side there hoping it's not going to pool too much because I have got quite a lot of water there but it's nice to see how these work wet in wet because we did use them wet in dry the last time we used the Viveda colour sheet so it's nice to see if we can use them wet on wet again I'll dry my brush off and take a little bit out just on the top there to give us that little shimmer of light and again if we want to go darker we can do by popping some neater paint down this edge we probably don't need to do too much there okay so we need to leave those to dry really before we put the little tops on and the ribbons although these two aren't completely dry down this side yet they are dryish at the top where they meet these so we can go ahead and do these um, little fixings here so what I'm going to do is I'll do um, use both the gold and the silver so First of all, I'll do the first one silver. I've got a smaller brush now so that I can reach, you know, get into those corners with my brush with this small fixture here. And I'm hoping that shows up to the camera, but it is really nice and shiny and you have definitely got that feel of it being silver. When we've finished, what I think I'll do is put some over the top of another colour so that it really shows up to you. So I'll clean my brush out and you'll notice I've used these straight, I'm using this straight off the colour charts here. I'm not mixing it with any water so it's nice and neat. So we get that good coverage of the gold and the silver. You can see on my brush just how shiny that is. So the gold's gonna show up more, so maybe we perhaps should have done all three with the gold, I'm not sure. But you can see my pen's still showing through. So although we've put the um, paint on quite thickly you can see still see your drawing I think I'm tempted to go with this one with gold because I just don't feel it's showing up enough I think I will so that they're all the same I think perhaps the silver would be more used popped on top of something so we'll just put this tiny bit of gold on top it's mixing with the silver so it's going to end up lighter than this one and we'll do the last one gold as well so we've got them all similar So 
seem to have got much more paint on the centre one than I have on the two outside ones. Let's just get a bit more. That's better. And I have got a bit of the blue in there. I've gone over, over the line a little bit. Okay, so now we probably need to do those ribbons. And for the ribbons we'll go back to this ruby red because a lot of people use red at Christmas. And again I'll use it straight off the card there. So this is why I really needed to change brush in order to get that fine line. And much easier I should have said to turn your paper upside down than to try doing them from that side so whenever you're doing any painting always think about is it going to be easier if I move my page around to do that okay and then we turn them back over and that's worked quite nicely um, so like I said these haven't they're not very far off being dry they're nearly dry um, they haven't pooled which is great so these Viviva are obviously drying really nicely um, not causing those cauliflowers so you can use them really well wet in wet and as they've dried we can also see the shine more so this one as we were putting it on we couldn't see that shimmer and we can now and actually it's slightly more green now it's drying um, than it is blue in the centre here so that green that we could see on here, wherever it was, Aurora, whoops, is kind of coming a little bit in the centre there as it's drying. So quite an unusual colour that one. But we can see the shine on all three. I'm hoping the camera picks that up. One thing I will say about these paints is um, I noticed this when I used the travel set the other day when I was out and about. When I got home I got very dyed fingers which doesn't usually happen with a watercolour but there you go so it's the quite staining I would say I think there's probably quite staining on the paper as well now I do want to see what the gold and silver look like on top of other colours but I don't particularly want to go on the top of these because I quite like them as they are so I'm just going to pop that to one side and this is uh, one of my sketchbooks that I've just been putting some colours down that I was uh, having a bit of a practice or something with and so I'm going to use, see what they look like on top of other colours. So this is the silver. I think this is just that you get two of the same here actually, so that you've got plenty to go at. And that lies down quite nicely on top of the other colours. Still transparent, you've still got the blue coming through there. And then of course you've got that shine and shimmer. So let's have a look at the gold. Gold might look quite nice on top of some green. Again, get plenty on your brush. So they're not opaque, they're not going to cover over that colour. They are watercolours. We're going to get that colour from underneath coming through and adding that little shimmer on. So there's going to be all sorts of applications where you want a bit of a shine and some gold on top, gold or silver on top of whatever it is you're painting, especially at this time of year around Christmas. So for those of you that perhaps want to ch change this into a Christmas card or some kind of a decoration or something, what you need to do now is get a really good um, crisp photograph of it. Of course, if you wanted to, you could just do this straight onto cards as a handmade card, painted, all individually painted and do a few cards all different colours and things perhaps some different shape baubles um, some candy canes something like that would be quite nice but if you want to reproduce the same image over and over on something what you need to do now is take a photograph so get a good crisp photograph in somewhere that's well lit either outside near the window um, make sure your lights always good you don't have to have a fancy camera you can just take a, an image with your smartphone or something like that if you wanted to and if it does come out too dark don't forget there's lots of things on your smartphone and on Canva when you're using the software there to lighten the image so you could always do that as well because we want a crisp light image we don't want it to be dull so make sure you're well lit and get that photograph and then we'll go on and upload that photograph to Canva and I'll show you where we go from there
Okay, so once you've uploaded your photograph that you've taken of your baubles to your computer, you need to go onto your computer and go on to canva.com. So www.canva.com. Some of you may already use this. I've got the paid for version. You can use it as a free version. You don't have as many um, options of things to use with the free version, but it is very useful. There's nothing wrong with a free version. Okay, so you'll see on the home screen, you could get all these different options across here and we want to go to print products. And when we press that, we'll see that one of the options that comes up is this folded card. So if you click on there, you'll open up a new tab and then you will find you've got this card that we can design on. So this is your fold line down here. Obviously that's the back of the card and this is going to be the front of the card. So once you're on the, this page, the next thing you need to do is go down the left hand side and look for the button that says uploads and then click upload file. When we get there, we need to scroll down to where you're, you've kept your file. In my case, I've left it in my video area section and it's just here. So click on it to highlight it and open it. And then it takes a few moments for it to upload here and you'll see it timing along here as it's uploading. So you just need to wait a, a moment for that to finish uploading. Okay, now you can see it's fully uploaded. You just need to click on it and that will make it come over here. And then of course we need it a bit smaller than that because it's going to go on this side of the card. So we need to just pop it in the center there. And then if you want to, if you've got the paid for version, what you can do is go to edit photo and you can remove the background. So this button here just quickly removes the background. There you go. So we've just got the baubles with no background and we can pop them wherever we want in that section. I'm just going to leave them in the middle there. And then if we come over here to elements, we're going to type in here something like happy Christmas. Press enter and I'm going to go to the tab that says graphics and we've got all these options that come up. Now you'll see there's little pro stickers next to some of those. These are the ones that you have to be a paid member to get. Some of them you'll notice that don't have those and these are free to use if you're using the free version. So you can see down here we've got some nice ones also that are free. I'm quite drawn to this one so let's have a look what this looks like because the colours don't look too bad with the baubles. I think we'll just move them down a bit, make this a bit bigger maybe and you can play around with this for quite a while getting it just how you want it. Now if you click on this you'll see if you come up here we've got the colours of the letters and if you want to change those to match the baubles we'll click the first one, click on colour, click on the picker colour and then go over to one of your baubles and change that to that and you'll see that that is now the colour of the dark area of this bauble. Go along to the next one, do the same again, pick a colour, we'll go over to the dark area of the orange one, the next one, whoops, misclicked there, let's go and we'll go for the pink and that way your colours in your lettering are going to match the colour of your baubles. So you can play around with that for a while, centre things up, you might want to put something underneath and then you can save it like that. Now as you're working in Canva it saves it all the time so if we look at file here it set, there's a save button and it says all changes saved so it constantly changes it as you're working and saves it for you. Then we need to download it, so we click share and you'll see you've got the option there to download. Okay, I lost my recording there for a little while, I'm new to this screen recording. So if we click download here, 
it gives you the options of what to download it with in what type of file so you could choose two or two of these and download it in both um, we'll just choose the PDF print and then click download and you'll see what happens here so it's going down to our computer that's going to be saved in your downloads and you can put it in whichever file you want to afterwards but you'll see this pops up and this is an option if you want it for Canva to print your design so you can see there there's a picture of your Christmas card and sending this to a printer look no further get it professionally printed right here now so print this with canva i have no idea what the prices are like i've never used this but there is that function there if you wanted to but what we've done is we've just saved this to our computer we can print it off ourselves at home um, and fold the card so you would print this onto an a sorry an a5 and then fold it into an a6 so your fold line won't show up that's just for reference Okay, so you can alter this and play around with it as much as you want. Save as many versions as you want. Um, you can see when you make that bigger that you can see that iridescence there, which is going to show on your card. And if you want to see what your card's going to look like actual size, you can zoom in and out here. So Cam Canva is really, really handy. Um, but like I say, you could also just paint lots of individual cards if you wanted to do that as well. OK, so I hope you have fun with doing those baubles or something similar. Like I say, you could do some candy canes. You can change your lettering. You can add other elements. So if you wanted to pop Father Christmas on there, um, whatever else, um, you could do that. Get all sorts of Christmassy things in the elements. There's just so many things in Canva to use. Um, so if you've not used it before, it's good just to have a bit of a play around with it. OK, so I hope you've enjoyed that. I certainly enjoyed using these paints. They really are nice, bright colours. Um, they, they remind me a little bit, actually, of the koi Noir paints that I've used in the past with the vivid colours and the fact that they kind of stain the paper, the dyes, really, rather than the watercolours that you traditionally lift off more easily. But I really enjoyed using these Vivida colours and I have linked everything down below um, in the description if you want to... Um, you know go along there and see what they've got i was going to ask you something there if you want any more videos like this showing you how to use things like canva and how to use various software please do ask because i'm quite happy to do that once i get a handle on this uh, screen recording um, software okay thank you very much for watching i'll be back with you again soon bye bye for now